Turkish Airlines Euroleague. I feel devotion. In this episode, in the game of the week, Fenerbahce Ulka went to Siena with a new coach. Someone who is not new is Caja Laboral's head coach Zan Tabak, and we talk to him. Earl Calloway and Michael Bramos are not only shooters. And finally, we reveal the B-Win MVP and the fantastic top three of the week. White Men Can't Jump was the title of a movie featuring Hollywood stars Wesley Snipes and Woody Harrelson. In actual fact, thanks to players like Victor Sanakidze of Monte Pasqui Siena, we definitely know that white men can jump. The Georgia native forward is renowned for his athleticism and his aggressive approach close to and above the rim. That's why the Italian champions decided to bring him to Tuscany during the last off-season. I played against Montebasque, so I learned it's very, uh, very tough to play against a team like Montebasque. And so when you play for Montebasque now, it's also you have to play tough. And so it's going to be tough for your opponents now. And just playing hard, and uh, regardless, you have to play here the defense, first of all. Victor has never played EuroLeague basketball before, but he prepared himself in the Italian league with a team steeped in history like Virtus Bologna, the club that won the first ever title in the modern era of the Euroleague in 2001. To play in Bologna, such a team with such a great history, is, means a lot. This, these three years are very important in my career. You know, I'm always thankful for the team and it, it's helped me to be where I am right now. With his particular skills, Sanakidze is a great rebounder and shot blocker, but he also is very dangerous off the ball. He knows exactly where to get his opportunities to shine. My role is not a, I'm not a scorer, so, but I'm always in offense trying to have an, uh, cuts or, or play off, off the offensive rebounds, but no. Some games you do more points, some games you do less points. It's also depending on the system, you know, it's not a lot of places for me I'm just because just I'm not the, the kind of player, you know, to score a lot. As a big-time jumper, Sanakidze loves to slam the ball with some smashing dunks that excite the crowd and boost his team's confidence. That's why he should become a true alley-oop and slam-dunk teacher in a league where we have some of the best artists in this very special discipline. There are some situations, uh, not on the fast break, but on the set plays, that um, sometimes Pepoinger can tell me his advice, like when is the best moment to do the other. Me also, I can also tell him, but most of the time it happens just on the game, without any practicing. Siena has always been a tough court to win at. It is the great crowd and atmosphere, but most importantly, the intensity that drives the team. That is exactly what Fenerbahce Ulka are looking for, to live up to the potential which was expected of them at the start of the season. Of course, we would like to win the game here, but more than this, we would like to play together. We would like to show our personality on the court. We would like to, you know, not playing in individual on the court. Coach Ertoglu Erdogan had a very tough week, replacing Simone Pianigiani as the Italian coach stepped down just before the game against his hometown club. As the new boss, he had to clarify some concepts to his players in order to put everybody on the same page. He said to us, uh, believe yourself, he wants to see us uh, on the court with desire, and play tough. He wants first these things, you know, and then he said, kill your egos and play for the team. The Turkish team played well in the first part of the game, hanging on to Siena midway through the second quarter. However, the visitors faced their usual problems. Monte Pasqui Siena's defense forced them to seven turnovers in less than five minutes as they led 49 35 at half time. The 
Italian champions took control in the second half, taking a 17-point lead in the third quarter, then responding to Fenerbahce Ulka's reaction. Alexander Razic scored three of his four three-pointers in the final quarter, driving his team to an 87-69 victory to make second place in the group safe with a 7-2 record. Daniel Hackett's intensity inspired his teammates. He has been the second best scorer of his team with 13 points behind Razic's 16, playing only 16 minutes before coming off with an ankle injury. He became our player of the game shooting 3 for 6 from the floor, a perfect 6 for 6 from the line thanks to 8 fouls drawn and he added 4 assists. We came back from a, a bad loss in uh, Tel Aviv and we bounced back and uh, today we needed a big win. We are connected player and coaching staff and uh, we care about each other and we play for each other and it shows on the court. Staying in Group F, Himki Moscow region has become a true playoff contender. Trezimir Lonchar has been playing there since 2010 and he's living through the most successful era of this very young club. I think I improved a lot. I established myself in Russia as a player and I developed at the time too. You know, I became, I before was playing more 4-5 four, and four, five, now I'm more playing 5 and I like my role and I like myself how I play in Russia. The injuries are what every player in the world fears more than any opponent. A torn ACL when he was 21 years old stopped his progression, threatening his career for real. After eight months I came back and you know then I came to Russia, I played in Rostov, I had a great year uh, and I got an offer, offer from Malaga, from Sergio Scalo to go to Malaga and the last game of the season I broke my left ACL so then I thought really I'm going to stop playing basketball because it doesn't have sense anymore but after seven months I came back again and Thanks to God, now I have no injuries, but this, I think this makes me stronger as a player too, as a person, and I start to look basketball with different eyes after these surgeries. Since coach Rimas Kertonaitis arrived at the club, Lonchar has established himself as a very good contributor in the center position, relying on his good hands and knowledge of the game. Prisimir gives him a lot of credit. He's ex-player, he understands he understand the players really well and the most important thing, he lets you play on the court. I mean, he's not that kind of coach. If, if you do some stuff that's not usual, that he's going to start and be behind you for the next five minutes, he just let it go, you know, and that's, I think that's, that's the good stuff. Now that he's used to the Russian way of life, Lonchar has become a reference to explain how to fit in well on and off the court. problem for the players who come to Russia is the language and I'm here for a while time so I can speak Russian and for sure I help the players and it's not easy for a European player to come to Russia especially the first year but I mean every player who come to Moscow can see that this is really like one unbelievable city and I mean it's cold but it's cold in many other cities in Europe too so if you want to have nice weather then you go play somewhere in uh, Onibitsa. In a very crucial game the Russian side traveled to Barcelona in week nine. It looked like a quite controlled game for the Blaugranas, but led for all the first half, finishing the second quarter with a double-digit lead. The home team kept on rolling in the third quarter, taking their biggest lead to 14 points thanks to the big man Ante Tomic and the all-time EuroLeague leading scorer Juan Carlos Novaro. Vitaly Fridzon and Sergei Monia helped Paul Davis cutting that lead to three points, but it wasn't enough. Barcelona managed to win 71-69, setting a new record for the most consecutive top 16 home wins with 22. As a player, Caja Laboral's head coach Zan Tabak was the center of the fantastic Yugo Plastica split that won three consecutive European titles between 1989 and 1991. Playing beside Tony Kukoc and Dino Raja, then winning the silver medal in Barcelona 1992, with them just behind the first USA Dream Team. His pass should help him now as a coach. 
there are only few aspects when being ex-player uh, makes uh, things easier. One of the things is um, being able to easier talk to the player and being able to easier to understand players. Also to act easier in the locker room because that's an environment when you are all your life. The rest of the stuff, the rest of the stuff, soon as you forget that you are a player, better for you. That's why he cannot ask to his players the same things that he was used to do. Basketball is basketball, as they say, but the rules, speed, and the refereeing of the game has changed. It's really difficult to find the big guys who can comply with their mobility with a 24-second shot clock and at the same time who are able to play under the basket. Modern game, uh, what is uh, much cleaner, much more game without the contact comparing to the game that was played before requires different style of the big guy. Not better, not worse, just different. What's not different is to deal with the great players, but Coach Tabak knows what it means to be a star, having had a long experience with them. Great starts only are visible and able to become great start if they became from the good organization. Because only good organization with the great stars made winners. It takes more than talent to become a star, and the coach knows that very well. We have a lot of young guys in the team who are future on the team, and those guys is not enough only to put them to play. During the regular practice, you need to work extra work, individual workouts with them on a daily basis. So talent is important, but only if it's helped by the work and supported by the mind. When he came in Vittoria last November, he started to work in that direction. The biggest problem that we have and the problem that we are working on a daily basis uh, is uh, that uh, mental problem. When things go down, when we are uh, down on the score, that we don't give up, that we keep a fighting. That happened in their most crucial game. They were barely eliminated in the regular season by EA7 Aporio Armani Milan before winning 64-62 after a 17-point comeback. We were down on the score, but you know we uh, we tried to do in the locker room, uh, locker room uh, wake up the players and put them back on the right track mentally to be able to win the game. Tactically, we didn't change, we didn't change anything. It's a simple mental approach. After that game, they recorded six more wins in a row, then five losses, including the last one against Maccabi Electra Tel Aviv on Thursday night. It is a tough situation, even if Tabak saw another good reaction by his team when Maccabi tried to take control in the second quarter. The teams entered the last two minutes with Baskonia up by three after the layup by Toma Hertel. The answer came from Ricky Hickman and David Logan, who showed a big heart fighting for the winning possessions and making the decisive plays. At the end, the Israeli squad won 66-62. In Group E, Seska Moscow were back to winning ways against Alba Berlin, 80-65, in a game dominated by centre Nenad Kurstic. His impressive contribution in 29 minutes on the floor stunned the German opposition as he finished with 20 points with 8 for 12 from the floor, plus 4 rebounds and 4 assists. He set the highest performance index rating of the week with 26, getting the B-Win MVP award. he plays like that, Seska feels they can really beat anybody, anywhere, anytime. The new faces at Panathinaikos Athens have had their moments during the season to show how important they are for the six-time European champions. Michael Bramos came to the fore after Game 7 in the regular season at Cantu against Mapo Oro. And he scored 21 points shooting an almost unbelievable 7 for 9 from beyond the arc. 
You know, I made my first couple ones and they felt good and our team, my teammates were doing a great job of finding me when I was open and, you know, sometimes it just happens that way and you, you, you think every basket's going to go in, so you know, hopefully I can do it again sometime this season. It'd be nice. After that game, Michael scored five more double digits. He is without doubt a long-range shooter first and foremost, but that is not enough for him. You know, I think one of my strengths is shooting and I'm working on you know my ball handling skills and trying to be more of a creator sometimes but um, you know right now I think my biggest strength to help this team is probably my outside shooting and, and my um, aggressiveness in the fast break. Basketball is not only a question of scoring of course. The shooting percentage must be a consequence of something else. An example of being a winning player is in front of his eyes every day for him and his teammates. Dimitris Diamantidis. He's a legend of the team. You know, he's, he, he does so much for us. And, um, you know, it's a great experience for me to learn from him because he's been through so many championship situations. So, and just to be a part of a rebuilding team, it's, it's unique because everyone's trying to, you know, keep the tradition alive. And, you know, we, we struggled in the beginning, but I think we're, we're getting better and improving and, you know, learning every day of what it takes to, to be a championship team. It may be a long road, but Michael is confident he is heading in the right direction despite having to face up to a few defeats. I think overall we've been pretty pretty consistent. We had a bad game in Ephesus on the road, um, and then a bad fourth quarter versus Madrid, but um, overall I think, I think we've been better, improving, you know, every game. The Greens showed further improvement in the crucial game against Anadolu Efes Istanbul on Friday night and particularly Michael, who was a factor in the outcome, scoring in double digits once again. Bramos put away 11 points, including two baskets during a terrific 16-0 run that decided the game, and perhaps the route to the playoffs in the last period, leading them to a 75-62 final success. With this win, Panathinaikos sent a strong message to Unicaja Malaga and Jalgiris Kunas that are following the Greens in the standings. Unicaja Malaga was one of the real surprises of the regular season and the Spanish team are still in the race for a playoff berth. Earl Calloway is enjoying playing basketball and spending his time in the beautiful seaside Spanish city which has allowed him to discover some of the sweeter aspects of European life. The relaxing, two to, from two to five, everything shuts down and they just go and enjoy life, so that's, that's pretty interesting. There's no stopping in America. <laughs> 30 minute, 30 minute break and you're good to go. Earl is one of the key performers responsible for the way the team plays being a point guard. He knows that this is the moment when everybody has to give 100% in order to be part of Euroleague's finest, no matter how good the opponents are. Earl right now is worried about Unicaja. You know, other teams have a good chance, but we have a good chance if we play like we're supposed to play. I'm not worried about anybody else but Unicaja right now. Malaga is coming off three victories in a row on the road. It all started with a beautiful performance in Moscow, where they probably started to believe that something great was possible. Play with everybody we played, we were in the game, and we ended up losing in the last couple, two, three minutes. So, Seska is a, a great example of how we can play. Callaway is a strong character with a smart look about his face. He knows he has to lead his teammates with the help of the very talented Marcus Williams. I think it's, it's, it's easier for both of us because if, if I need to get the ball and run a play, I can. If he needs to run a play, I can. Or if I need to guard the best player, I can. If he needs to guard the best player, I can. As a former player of Sibona Zagreb, Callaway knew some of his teammates like Kronoslav Simon and Luka Zonic. And he was already used to Yasmin Repas's Croatian style of coaching. Similar coaching, you know, aggressive, defensively, and uh, just wanted you to work hard. That's the main thing. 
I remember Kruno. He didn't play that much, but we beat him. Uh, he was a good player, uh, but we kind of beat Zaga when we played, so, you know. They're pretty, they were a good team, but we were better. Unicaja hosted Zalgiris Kunas in week nine. Both teams knew that losing that one would have been like a knockout punch for any qualification hopes. Malaga started very well as Callaway boosted his Croatian teammates Zoric and Simon, taking an early double digit lead. Zalgiris' reaction was impressive as the Lithuanian side took control with a 22 7 run to lead 38 31 at half time. The guests made their best effort in the last quarter when a 10-0 run capped by Mindaugas Kuzminskas put them on the right path to an 83-67 win. Now both clubs are two games behind Seska and Panathinaikos in Group E. Now let's take a look at the top three plays of the week. Number three, Istanbul, Turkey. Ricky Minard of Besiktas drives for a fast break layup but Kostas Papanikolaou chases him down and rejects the shot. Unbelievable. Number two, Siena, Italy. Bobby Brown of Monte Paschi finds Christian Kangur, who shocks everyone with a quick no-look assist to Benjamin Eze for a layup. the number one play of the week. Madrid, Spain, game tied at 73-73 with a few seconds left. Rudy Fernandez drives and dishes to Dante Draper, who drills the game-winning three-pointer at the buzzer. In 2011-12 regular season game 7, Brozzi Baskets Bamberg had a big chance to win against Seska Moscow. But with a tie score and 11 seconds to go, defensive artist Viktor Kriapa made his only steal that night. Milos Teodorzic turned a possible dream into a nightmare for the German side, scoring a buzzer beater winning shot. Will Bamberg be ready for the new challenge next week? Dimitris Diamantidis was the clutch time hero last season in Malaga. Down by four in the last minute, he gave the victory to his side, scoring the last two of his seven three-pointers that night in a 77-76 win for Panathinaikos. What will he do next week at Unicaja? The Peace and Friendship Stadium is the place to be on Thursday night as reigning champs Olympiakos Piraeus takes on high-flying FC Barcelona Regal in the Turkish Airlines Euroleague Game of the Week. When these two meet, it is always explosive. And games between Olympiakos and Barcelona have defined the course of Euroleague seasons over the past two decades. On two occasions, the title has been on the line. The first final between the Greek and Spanish powerhouses back in 1997 in Rome was billed as a duel between two big-name point guards, David Rivas of Olympiakos and Sasha Djordjevic of Barcelona. Rivas was the man who would lead his team to victory with 26 points in a 73-58 win to give Olympiakos its first Euroleague title. Fast forward to 2010, with Paris the venue for the second Euroleague final contested by these two giants. This time Barcelona would emerge victorious. The game would be decided by another superstar performance, and this time Juan Carlos Navarro was the man. Barcelona's backcourt hero further cemented his legendary status at the club with 21 points, running the game as Olympiacos tried in vain to shut him out. An 86-68 win crowned Barcelona as 2010 Euroleague champion in the most recent final between the two sides. But the destiny of the 2012 trophy was also decided in large part by the clash of these two legendary clubs. Last year's semi-final in Istanbul saw a favourite for the title fall by the wayside. Defying the odds in a 68-64 game, Vasilis Spanoulis was instrumental in a win for Olympiakos 
that took the underdog into the final, and the rest is history. Title number two for the Greek side, heartbreak for Barcelona. Spanoulis was kept to a season low nine points at the Palau Blaugrana in the revenge match earlier in the top 16, won by Barcelona. Juan Carlos Navarro hobbled off injured. The two will be back to make amends this week, backed by star studded lineups on both sides of the court. Players like Costas Papanicolaou, Georgios Printesis, and Kyle Hines for Olympiacos, Pete Michael, Ante Tomic, and Erizem Lorbeck for Barcelona. It's got all the makings of a thriller, in which either a five or seven game unbeaten run will come to an end. It's Olympiacos against Barcelona in the Turkish Airlines EuroLeague Game of the Week. Euroleague.